Hello everyone, welcome back to lecture number 30. So, in this we will continue uh, looking at the applications of uh, UPS ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy. In the last class we have uh, looked at gold as an example and then we have also just seen uh, the, the capabilities and, and its um, um, application uh, in, in a metallic surface. But today I will like to sh uh, show you a few more examples um, so that we can um, clearly see the scope of uh, this kind of a spectroscopy. But before I start, one thing that I would also like to mention here is unlike in the, in the scanning tunneling spectroscopy, uh, we will see that uh, clearly in an example which is coming up uh, that the, the, there is a huge averaging effect in this particular case because this spectroscopy is not local. Yeah? It depends quite a lot on the, on the, on the, on the, on the excitation spot of the, of the photon. Uh, and therefore, you basically just see um, an image that is coming from or the collection of the data that is coming from about several hundreds of uh, micrometer squares. So, that basically means it is actually kind of an averaged uh, data than um, um, local data like we have seen in the scanning tunneling spectroscopy. So, just keep that in mind. I will show you uh, this with the help of an example. So, you will understand that in, in, in greater detail. So now let us have a look at a, a slightly different material. So like what we have looked at was um, a noble metal like uh, gold in the previous uh, class. But here I have nickel 111 surface which is known to be a quite a reactive surface and also known to be quite um, an unstable surface. You cannot just keep it clean for a long time because it is very reactive. So now, when you look at this, so here I have two spectra. So like uh, the, the spectra that is taken on the nickel surface itself is basically uh, this one. So this is actually the, the bold one which goes like this. Yeah. So this is basically the density of state. But what is quite striking here in this case, again binding energy uh, and this zero would therefore represent basically the Fermi level and what you clearly see is that the density near the Fermi energy is not anymore looking like a normal flat function as you have seen in the case of gold. Instead, it is looking much more spiky like this. Yeah, so this is quite interesting because the nature of this density of state near the Fermi energy would decide how reactive a material is. For example, gold is known to be a noble metal because you see that the, the corrugation in the density of state is quite flat near the Fermi energy. So any electron or any particular electron that is close to the Fermi energy is the one having the lowest binding energy and that is the electron which is actually capable or involved in a chemical reaction uh, when this uh, particular surface is exposed to something. So the sudden effect that happens on the surface is quite a, a strongly dependent on what is around the Fermi energy. And that is itself the reason why the valence band is quite the decisive factor in many of the properties, the, the chemical reactivity or the transport property or whatsoever you name or the magnetic property, whatsoever you name, it basically strongly dependent on the density of state near the Fermi energy because that is the electron that is readily available from the surface for any kind of chemical reaction or transport or whatsoever you mean. So now you clearly see that nickel is having a spiky density of state that is actually due to the due to its chemical nature itself but that is an indicator that this nickel is going to be much more reactive than uh, a gold 111 surface for example. You have already seen that there is no uh, a spiky density of state near the Fermi energy. So you will actually just see for most of the catalytic material uh, the, the density of state near the Fermi energy is much more corrugated than uh, a flat density like in the gold uh, 111 case or in, in general gold. Yeah? So that is why uh, understanding this kind of um, uh, electronic structure of the valence band is quite, quite uh, important. Um, uh, for, for understanding the material property itself uh, and that actually is what uh, the, the application of, of UPS in, in, in general yeah, or in, in general understanding the electronic structure of the valence band. Now, 
uh, here in this particular example, I have actually just also chosen this example because you can see now you can take the nickel 111 surface and I can deposit something on top. So, this is basically something known as a boronitrite. So, this is the schematic you can see. It is also kind right now a currently celebrated two dimensional material. It is made up of boron and nitrogen and they have a similar structure like the graphene but here the nitrogen and boron are actually connected in a hexagonal manner. So, this is actually a two dimensional material consists of two different type of element. Yeah? Uh, so, this in general therefore look like the graphene. So, but now you deposit this molecule or prepare this material on top of the nickel 111 surface and then you can do the UPS uh, ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy. So, you clearly see that new features are coming up. So, of course, these two features near the Fermi energy is truly coming from the nickel 111 surface itself because uh, I have told you that um, whatever we are measuring is just from a few layers uh, uh, near to the surface. So, that means nickel is still visible uh, to the ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy and therefore, we see something from that. But after that about 5 electron volt you can see there are strong bands that are actually coming from the material itself. So, you can now clearly understand uh, just by comparing the density of state of the nickel and also the density of state of the uh, HBN deposited on top. You can basically by comparing you can understand clearly how the density of state basically changes as a function of uh, or as a as when you deposit something on, on the nickel. So, you can clearly do this. So, this is basically how the, the density of state would look like for different material. You can clearly do it for any different type of material and you can use it for understanding their electronic structure in general. You can also for example, compare the change in work function. That is something interesting because if you know the photon energy, so that is what I have told you in the beginning. So, if you know the, the photon energy, then you can clearly also calculate the work function if work function is unknown. Yeah? Now, what you see is that when you deposit the boron nitride on the nickel 111 surface, what you clearly see that there is a change in the work function. Yeah? So, this change in the work function is due to the fact that the material property itself is changing. So, that is something you can also measure. Uh, in, in ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy clearly. So, that is something that you can um, and do uh, with this kind of spectroscopy. Yeah? So, nice this is uh, good. So, you also have here an STM image just to show you how the microscopic structure of the boron nitride look like. So, you can also clearly see that is the moray pattern what you are seeing, but in inside you can see like tiny bright dots uh, which are also looking like hexagon that is clearly the one which is originating from the boron nitride mesh itself. Yeah? So, the, these big ones are nothing but the more pattern. Yeah? So, that is good. So, you can deposit the material now, you can now do the scanning tunneling microscopy, understand their microscopic structure, you can also do basically the ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy and understand the electronic property of the valence band. So, this is good. So, this is nice. Now, we are actually just making things more collectively and we are actually uh, understanding things um, uh, more in a consolidated way. So, that is nice. I want to show you uh, also uh, um, a comparison here um, and also just to, to use UPS and uh, STM, STS uh, in comparison to understand the electronic structure of um, a semiconducting surface. So, this is something that we have already talked about. So, we have here the silicon bulk expectation is this, but the interesting thing is that the silicon 111 is actually a, would go undergo a reconstruction and therefore, you basically expect something like these kind of surface states. Yeah? So, the S1, S2 are some surface states that is near the valence band and U1, U2 are basically some surface state that is near the conduction band. Yeah? So, we have already seen that in the STS. So, we, we have seen that we can collectively or we can individually measure uh, by just moving your tip next to an atom and you can measure the electronic structure at a, an extremely localized fashion. That means, at an atomic scale we can measure. And we have also discussed that is quite important because you can 
clearly understand uh, the origin of this different kind of electronic structure or where they are clearly originating and so on. But now I also want to make a comparison of the STS that you measured to an, a, a photo electron spectroscopy. Well, this is actually known as inverse photo electron spectroscopy. We will study that um, in a minute. That is just the opposite of photo electron spectroscopy, but just keep it in mind that when I just measure the photo electron spectroscopy, you clearly see that I can measure the S1 and S2. Yeah? So, this actually do correspond to each other. So, you can see although the uh, UPS is actually a bulk measurement, I can still see on the surface this is uh, present, this kind of surface states are present and therefore, I can clearly measure that. The only difference is the broadening. Yeah? So, of course, the I can see the signature, they are appearing like more like a shoulder, but they are broader than of course, what you measure basically in the scanning tunneling spectroscopy. But nonetheless, we can basically just measure that. So, similarly, the U1 is also just kind of present here. There is slight variation in the energy because in photo electron spectroscopy, you do collect things uh, from an, a larger area. So, therefore, this averaging effect is there. So, this is what the techniques when you compare the scanning tunneling spectroscopy and the ultraviolet photo electron spectroscopy. One is extremely localized, so that means you can go on an atom and then do the spectroscopy and the other one give you an information about a larger area. So, therefore, you would find that uh, tunneling spectroscopy is rather difficult to do because this is something that one need to do atom by atom to understand. But just for a quick understanding about the electronic structure of a film, uh, one would not basically immediately apply the tunneling spectra, rather you quickly check with uh, ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy because this is much more, uh, much quicker or uh, e easily accessible than uh, a tunneling spectroscopy for example. So, that that is why like uh, uh, ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy is still very popular, um, although this is uh, an older technique than tunneling spectroscopy. It is very popular and this has been very, very routinely used uh, by surface scientists in understanding the electronic structure of, of materials yeah, in, in general. So, now we can look at a few more examples. So, to, to kind of understand um, the capability of ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy. So, this is again UPS. What I have here is actually a silicon 7 by 7 surface. So, now you see what, I, what you are seeing is the same kind of spectrum like you have seen in the previous slide, but in a larger a scale of window. That means, I am looking at deeper and deeper binding energy of electrons. So, that means, I am looking deeper into the valence band for example. Again, you have the S1 and S2. So, these are the surface states and then as you go deeper, you start to get actually the normal states that are corresponding to the silicon itself. But now, what I want to show you is that if I would basically just do a hydrogen exposure, that means you prepare the silicon 111 surface, of course it is 7 by 7 reconstructed and then if you would basically deposit hydrogen on, on top of the silicon 111 surface, what you find something interesting yeah? and that is also why I want to show you this example because you can basically see what is going on on the surface you clearly see, so suddenly you see that this peak is missing now, the S2 peak is basically missing now. That is quite interesting. So, if you recollect that S2 is basically originating from the add atom on the surface. Yeah? So, this is indicating that now when you deposit the hydrogen atoms on the surface or hydrogen on the surface then basically all the surface atoms are getting passivated or getting saturated by the hydrogen atoms. So, that means now the surface is kind of saturated and therefore, you kill the surface state S2. But the S1 is basically coming from uh, a silicon atom that is sitting a little bit inside and not just on the very first layer and therefore, that is not affected. So, they persist but the other one is actually kind of killed just because you have uh, the hydrogen passivation. So, this is clearly something very interesting. Now, you can use this kind of a spectroscopy and clearly look at the surface and understand well what kind of a chemical change has gone on and 
what is actually or where specifically it has happened. Well, of course, now our understanding is better because we have used scanning tunneling spectroscopy and photoelectron spectroscopy to clearly uh, differentiate where this S2 and S1 are coming from. Originally, before scanning tunneling spectroscopy, it was not known where the S2 and S1 are originating from, but now we clearly know it. And once you know it, so that means a combination of this kind of spectroscopy would give you uh, a huge uh, uh, and very useful information about the interface um, and the surfaces itself. Yeah? I have one more example here, which is again a germanium 111 surface, which is also a very uh, popular semiconducting material and you can see here this is actually a clean 2 by 8 reconstructed germanium 111 surface and uh, you, upon hydrogen passivation you can clearly see some of the peaks are missing. Yeah, So, this peak is basically missing. So, these two are the same spectrum one is done at liquid nitrogen and the other one is done at room temperature but you clearly see is that one of the particular peak is actually vanished um, upon hydrogen exposure which is indicating that you have clearly a kind of uh, surface passivation and the surface atoms are now uh, uh, reacted to the uh, hydrogen that you have exposed onto the surface. So, that is the interesting thing. Th think, well, that is quite nice. You can also notice that all the time whenever you do the spectrum, this uh, photon energy is actually given and once the photon energy is given, you can also calculate the work function of the material. Everything is nice. You have a, a quite an, a detailed understanding about the surface and, and interface of, of materials. Now, what I want to do is I want to basically just focus on the application of UPS in molecular thin film. Yeah? So, here are two very nice examples I have chosen because these molecules I have chosen is actually because they have been also kind of celebrated molecules in the semiconductor industry based on molecules generally known as PTCDI and then you can see that both the molecules are the same except having the small methyl um, functional group uh, in, in one of the case. Yeah? So, that is that is it. Now, what we want to do? We want to do is basically just the ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy of the molecular film, but here what I am doing is actually just a big film. Yeah? So, that is also something that you have to see. Now, our perspective has also changed. When you look at scanning tunneling spectroscopy or scanning tunneling microscopy, you are always trying to look things in a greater detail. You are trying to look what happens to the molecule, when it adsorbs, what is the electronic structure of a single molecule and, and so on. Those are the kind of questions that you put forward when you try to do scanning tunneling spectroscopy or scanning tunneling microscopy because it has that possibility. But when it comes to ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy, you go a little bit more bigger that means, in this case, I am actually just looking at a 15 nanometer thick film of molecule on a gallium arsenide surface. And now, I can basically measure the, the, the density of state of the molecule. So, you can see clearly that this is the binding energy. The binding energy is basically increasing. And somewhere here, I have the Fermi level. But clearly, in the experiment, you see that for some region, uh, about 2 electron volt, there is no density of state or there is no electrons coming out of the material because it is clear it is an, a semiconducting organic molecule which has a clear homo lumo gap. Yeah? And because of that, you clearly have this kind of a flat uh, no density near the Fermi energy. And as you now go deeper in energy, you can see basically you have start to get the first peak and that is actually corresponding to the homo of the molecule. Yeah? And that is also something you uh, remember that we have talked about or we have discussed basically in the, in the case of scanning tunneling spectroscopy as well. Now, you can see clearly that I am doing the spectroscopy, the UPS on two independent molecules uh, on gallium arsenide, uh, a thick film and you clearly see that this molecule that the methylated molecule is having a much higher gap from the Fermi energy. So, that means the first uh, molecular resonance 
is coming about 2.5 electron volt with respect to the Fermi level and in the other case it is actually a little bit less. Yeah. So, that is the clear difference that you want to, to, to make between these two molecules. So, in general you can basically measure the density of state of the molecule. So, what you are also seeing here this one is actually the theoretical calculation to make some kind of a comparison and the comparison is also kind of nicely matching with the uh, density of state of the molecule. So, these are the discrete densities. Yeah. So, you can see these lines are actually telling the discrete homo, homo minus 1 and so on and this plot here is actually the density of state itself. So, that means you are basically plotting how many electronic states are present in a given window of energy. Yeah. So, that means you can see here there is no state between 3 and 2, there is one state and between 4 and 5 you see I have basically about 8 or 9 states for example. Yeah. So, that is how you calculate the density of state. So, you can uh, look at that and that is actually what is corresponding more closer to the experiment than the, uh, than the line than just drawing the MO diagram for example. So, this is the MO diagram. So, just for your understanding I am just putting the MOs and this is the uh, calculated density of state yeah? and this is the experiment, the experimental measurement. So, this is nice. So, now you can make the clear correlation between them. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you also a few more examples. So, it is basically just showing you like I can also just now study the electronic structure evolution as a function of thickness. Yeah? The problem, so it is again somewhat similar molecule like what we have seen in the in the previous case the same molecule but now what i'm doing is basically i'm just depositing and increasing the thickness of the layer you can see here it's 0.5 nanometer showing that a sub mono layer coverage and here the coverage is basically increasing yeah coverage is basically increasing and then as the coverage increases you can see the electronic structure is also slightly modifying yeah so that's something you also have seen in the case of tunneling spectroscopy that at the interface there is strong influence of the surface, but as you go thicker and thicker you basically just start to uh, see the more molecular type uh, structure. And But here in UPS uh, this is much more feasible because this is a technique which is really meant to do uh, that kind of thing compared to tunneling microscope because tunneling microscope is not very capable of measuring things that are like 20 nanometer thick and so on. It is actually just due to the stability of the instrument and the imaging itself. Yeah? But here you can clearly do that. Now, what I also want to show you is that you can actually just not only measure the ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy by removing electron, you can also do the opposite of the photoelectron spectroscopy by injecting an electron into one of the electronic state. Yeah, by injecting an electron into one of the electronic state, you can basically just get a photon out of the material because if you are injecting an electron uh, into a given level with a certain energy gap, then that amount of photon or the photon that is corresponding to that particular energy would be emitted by the material. So, you can now basically just inject electron into the material and then look at the photo emission from the material and that is actually something known as inverse photo emission material. Just to, to have uh, an understanding, uh, let us see I have here a density of state of the unfill level which is just looking like uh, let us say like this. yeah. And then you know basically that when I am injecting electron into this part, this particular energy, you see clearly that the density is lower and if you are injecting electron into this particular density or per particular energy, you clearly see that the density is actually higher. Yeah? So, that means the, the amount of photon that is that will be emitted by the material will also be dependent on the density of state yeah? Where, to which the electrons are actually injected. So, therefore, finally, what you can also see is that you can see the valence band and the conduction band if you would basically combine both the ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy and inverse photoelectron spectroscopy together. So, that is the uh, strength of this technique and I have here a molecule which is actually known as the copper PC 
molecule which is actually a thylocyanin molecule, a copper thylocyanin molecule deposited on silicon 111 surface and here is actually uh, a UPS which is uh, carried out as a function of thickness and also an uh, inverse photoelectron spectroscopy carried out as a function of thickness. And then what you clearly see is that as the, as the thickness increases, the onset of the density of state of the valence band is basically shifting away from the Fermi energy and also similarly the onset of the conduction band. So, this is basically representing the conduction band and this is representing the valence band and the onset of the conduction band is also basically bending in this way. So, that means the LUMO and the HOMO of the molecule with respect to the surface density of state is actually just changing as the interface is basically going. So, this is something represented the film thickness. So, this is basically the interface and as the thickness of the film is basically increasing, you can clearly see that uh, the, the molecular HOMO LUMO is also changing with respect to the uh, conduction band and valence band of the of the surface. Yeah, that is something I have already told you. This is something that we would expect and that is something we can also now clearly measure experimentally if we combine now the UPS and uh, uh, IPES, the inverse photoelectron spectroscopy. So, together you see clearly uh, that we have a greater understanding about the interfaces and of course, I would basically just put it into a perspective that uh, understanding electronic structure of interface is quite, quite important. That is something I have already told you also in the previous classes that if you want to construct uh, junctions, for example, this is actually a layout for the solar cell uh, with just simple a single layer active material or uh, bilayer heterojunctions and so on. So, everywhere what you are interested is basically to understand the electronic structure of the interface and that actually decides the, the efficiency or the, the efficiency at which the electron or the hole is basically transported uh, to the electrodes and, and therefore, it is quite, quite important that we understand clearly the uh, interfacial electronic structure and that is exactly what I have showed you in the previous example of any heterojunction, it can be like a molecular uh, semiconductor heterojunction or um, semiconductor metal heterojunction, whatsoever is your interest, you can basically clearly understand it using uh, ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy because ultraviolet photoelectron spectroscopy is also giving you a little bit more global picture than scanning tunneling spectroscopy. But scanning tunneling spectroscopy is, is um, also something one can actually use for understanding things at an atomic, uh, at an atomic level. Thank you very much for your attention and we will uh, meet in the next class. Thank you.